welcome flip clock fans we've got a general electric in the flip clock fan studio we're going to talk about the alarms on these flip clocks in general how these how they work this one is almost a famous flip clock this is from the sopranos soprano home movies season 6 episode 13 tony's at uh, bobby bacala's house and uh, janice he's married to janice at this time janice is tony's sister and Tony starts giving it to Janice about something or other, and Bobby takes offense at it. Next thing you know, boom, Bobby would call a sucker punch. And Tony don't take too kindly to that, and unfortunately, Tony loses the fight. I figured Bobby was dead at this point. But there on the right, you can see the clock, and there on the nightstand, there's the clock. Tony looks at it later, and you can see a little bit. Turns out it's the... General Electric 7-4310C. It's a little bit different than the one we got. See the alarm there? It's got dots instead of dashes. And the other thing is, um, see here it is, model 7-4310F. Um, here it's 00, it says Japan, and on the uh, C model, it's on the 04 for some reason. Anyway, you got four screws to take apart here, or to take out, to get the clock apart. And on the back, it's got in big letters, don't take this apart. And I happen to agree with that. If you've got it energized, it is a very dangerous clock, and we'll show you that in a second. And these knobs, nice looking knobs, big knobs, and they're actually pretty hard to get off. You can not you can hardly get a grip on them. So I'm gonna show you a little trick to get those off. And I've, I've had a video about this before and we used Gorilla Tape. I'm still a fan of Gorilla Tape. You can use uh, T-Rex tape or something a little stronger than plain duct tape. Sorry about that. Uh, you gotta be careful where you stick this stuff. You don't wanna stick it on that chrome stripe. It could take that stripe off. Seriously, it could. Anyway, you want to put this on um, on your knob and give it a good squeeze there. Get good contact. Because you don't want to do this more than once. I know this looks like excessive, but... It's the way I like to do it. And it works for me. Just give a secondary wrap here. But you get the idea, and then you just pull straight away. It didn't really take that much force. It works. Now the sleep, uh, the sleep button here. Oh, sorry about that. Bobby Bacala sucker punch there. Anyway, it gives me this little extra to grip there. And you want to do that instead of like getting pliers or something like that. Don't, uh, don't try that. This one here, I'll need to use the Gorilla Tape trick. But the, the bigger one here, which is the tuner dial, you don't. Now you see that, how that moves around in there like that? It's supposed to move like that. We'll see it, we'll show you that a little bit later, but those two uh, indentions got a contact in there. And you'll see how that works later. So just to, op to open this up, you just pull straight out. Well, you can see here, someone's probably tried to pry that that knob off in the past but you got to try to make sure that post clears there once it clears it should come straight out don't want to lose that if you see that laying around now you know where that came from someone's got this tied in a knot in here the speaker wire there so i want to go ahead and take that speaker out anyway i want to probably clean the case a little bit so i need that out Just slides right out. There's no screws to undo. I'm trying to undo this. I don't see any reason why it has to be in a knot like that. I don't think there's any shielding or anything like that going on. So we can get this like a tray out and evidence. My goodness. That's pretty bad. And and look in here. It looks like like a cockroach nightclub 
we've been having a good old time. Okay, but the rest of the clock, surprisingly, is not as dusty. But we want to go ahead and clean that case out for sure. Now you see here, here's where it's dangerous. There's where the, the wire comes in. That's uh, 120 volts there. That that could kill you. you be very careful. Don't don't play with this clock when it's when it's energized and you've got the case off. Surprisingly, I've never been shocked by a flip clock. I definitely don't want to be hit by this one. So I'll I'll uh, dust that off a little bit. That speaker, not that bad. Now, like I said, we're we're talking about the alarm, and I want to show how these alarms work. This is the how you set the alarm. I can tell you, it feels a little scratchy. It feels like uh, dusty, so something. Now we'll set it here at uh, 10 o'clock. It's not going to go off at exactly 10, but watch it's real close here. Okay, there's some internals that are moving there, and that's what I want to show you about. Now these clocks. To try to, they will not go off on an exact time. And if you see, here's a, another clock, and you can see there's a, right at the top corner of that four, top right corner, you'll see a little tab move over. And that's to make sure that five drops exactly on zero, zero. So the dropping of the five, and in this case the nine, is not what sets the alarm off. It's the gears themselves. And this, this, is gonna work. this is the clock we're working on today. So I'm going to show you what's going on here. So it's it's truly electromechanical. So there's a lot of a lot of action going on here, and it involves this switch here. It's an Omron switch, and I've taken this one off so we can get a better look. Here's this, the button. It's depressed. Now, what's going on here? This is the the common, and this is two different options here. So this says NC, which means normally closed. And that means when the button is not pushed. These are actually connected on the inside of that switch, which is weird. It's opposite of what you'd think. So right now, these are actually connected, and that would be setting the alarm off if the alarm selector on the top of the clock was selected. So here, the button is not pushed. That would be where the bar has moved to the, to the right, as we're looking at. Now there you see, now the alarm would be off, because now, because the button is pushed, it's an open circuit, and they're no longer the circuit's no longer completed. And watch your move here. To the right, there it goes. Setting off, it would be setting off the alarm. So I wanna show you how that works on the inside there, cause it's, it's interesting. And if there's something wrong with the clock, it might be in here. But really, it's not often that this mechanism is a, is a part of a problem, unless someone else has taken it apart and put it together wrong. Now here's a spring that helps move that bar. We'll, we'll need to take that off before you go any further. You don't want to stretch that spring out. There's one screw here. A lot of the other clock radios, uh, Panasonic's and some others, are similar. Now you, you've got two, ta two uh, pieces of plastic here that are catching that. And I'll tell you something though, the Panasonic's, the plastic is brittle. And if you do this, you're likely to break that. For some reason, the GE plastic is better, significantly better, so that's not brittle at all. Now here we go, we can see the, get the spring out of the way. We can see the wheel here that sets the alarm. And you see, when I move that bar forward, you see these, th these things coming up. There's three tabs poking in there. The, the tabs dropping in there allow that bar to move. The tabs, I'm gonna to have to clean that off. Now, before we get to those tabs, look here on the inside. It almost looks like a gear, but it's not. This is what causes the clackety sound. And what that is, is it stops the, the wheel from moving the wrong direction. It can only move one way. It's kind of the way they're angled. And it does make that clack, clicking sound. It holds it steady. Now there, the black one between the two orange there, that's the one that's going to make the sound. Some some of the clocks have springs that hold that bar up in there. Now there's our, there's our tabs. You can see it's got a slant to it, kind of a ramp. 
that's when the when the clock comes off of being on alarm it has to ramp back up because that wheel's going to ride on top of those tabs normally until it drops. And you can see I'm turning, if you see that gear on the top there, I'm turning the clock, which is causing this wheel to go clockwise in this case. So as the clock moves, it's moving those tabs underneath that wheel until it drops off and drops in when it drops off that ledge there. Now you see, when, I gotta be careful because if that comes off, we're gonna have a alarm that's not that's not uh, configured correctly. It has to be in that exact exact position. But you can see when the, when the bar moves, the gear has some play there, so it will stay in the right position. But if you take this off, you're gonna have a time getting it set correctly again. I'm gonna actually take it off here because there's a lot of grime as you can see and I want to get that cleaned up and probably put a little white lithium grease to help that move a little better just a little so to show you how you put it back on I haven't cleaned it yet but it doesn't matter what position you put it on the other wheel is the one that matters and I have to move the, the orange one forward you didn't see me but I moved the black one back just a hair to get on the, on the inside of that ring so that when it when it turns you now it makes the sound and then it should where it goes dropped right in so it dropped off that ledge and dropped into place which would have set set the alarm off again if you had it the selector on top selected to alarm now while we've got this clock apart you can see the, it's pretty dirty in there. It's pretty hazy. It's um, all the cockroaches in there smoking up the joint after all these years. It's got it pretty hazy because they all smoke, you know. And it, this is the um, this is the uh, tuner, and the, the the string will turn that indicator as well as the wheel itself here turns the actual tuner that's on the circuit board. That right there selects the radio station. You do not want to unstring this. Now, if you've, if you've unstrung it, uh, we actually have a video on how to put that back. Anyway, I'm showing you here, there's four screws on either side, or two screws on either side that you have to take off to get that faceplate off. And there's another one. If you look right down in there, there, the screwdriver's on it now. So you got the, don't take these two off. There's two there, just leave those alone. So just the four in the corners and that one on the top to get that out. It comes off really, oh, there's another sucker punch sorry about that and uh, yeah that comes off easy boy we got some work to do get this cleaned up close down this nightclub so there we've got it we've cleaned it up it, the wheel just moves better you can just feel it. it just after I've got that all cleaned out I'm gonna make sure that it's gonna drop now, it's not gonna drop exactly 11 that's as good as it's going to get. That's the way these clocks were. you got to remember, that's why they became obsolete and the LEDs took over. But we like them. We love them. Well, thanks for taking the time.